All right, so I'm gonna jump in. Today's webinar is all about the transport management system. Um, we've got uh, a few different topics to cover on the webinar related to transport. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is consignment. I'm then gonna jump into talking about how consignments relate to manifests, um, run sheets, and okay, yeah, I'm gonna go into um, discussing uh, the the run sheets, delivery runs, and rate zones, which are which are all part of the transport system and and really important parts when you're learning how to set everything up and learning how the actual transport system works and thinks. So, just as a as a brief overview, um, any any transport job in Card and Cloud is called a consignment. That's the name that we've given to to transport jobs. Transport jobs themselves are the jobs that you give to a driver to go and do. Now, a manifest is a grouping of consignments. So some companies, when they first sign up with Card and Cloud, they find this a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to explain exactly what a manifest is within Card and Cloud. A manifest in Card and Cloud is like a list of jobs that you are um, doing for one of your clients, normally on a single day. So in, in our old business at, at Roving, when we were doing our, our cross dock deliveries, we would go to a business and we would pick up a whole lot of manifests. Uh, sorry, we'd pick up a single manifest from them, which contained a whole, a whole bunch of consignments. And there might be, say, 20 different consignments on that manifest, and we'd pick them all up and bring them back and then sort them. So the manifest really acts as like a grouping of consignments for a single day. It's really useful, um, in, especially in the, in the cross dock space, because often people will say, oh, it was on the Tuesday manifest. And so then you can kind of narrow down your search for a particular job if you don't have a reference number or something else like that. Um, I'm also gonna run across the, just, just what delivery runs are from a high level. And, and I'm gonna go into that now and explain what delivery runs are and also how to set them up and how to configure them. So I'm first just gonna show you a little image on our help site. So I've just switched across to our help page, which is um, on, our, on our knowledge base. If I have a look up here for delivery runs and bring up the page all about delivery runs, there's a little video here with me explaining rate zones and delivery runs, but what I wanna show you is this image here. So a delivery run is basically like an area that you deliver to. Um, in this example, I've broken up Sydney into four different zones. We've got Southeast, Northeast, Northwest, and Southwest. Why companies do this is that when they are bringing in stock and they're sorting it to go back out again on trucks, normally what they do is they break it up into runs. So if, if a particular package comes in and let's say that it's going to Manly, um, which we can see from the map is inside the Northeast area, then they would take that stock and put it into an area which is for all of the Northeast jobs. That's really important because it allows them to be much more efficient when they're loading trucks to actually find the stock which is going out on a particular truck. Now, Card and Cloud has a whole bunch of rules in the system that you can configure to specify when jobs are created, which run do they go on to automatically. And as part of today's training, we'll actually be going through that and setting that up. So that's what a delivery run is. It's, it's an area that you deliver to, and often you would put, say, that whole area on, on one vehicle, or you may split it up into multiple vehicles but it's a way in which you can sort your jobs into specific um, zones. If I come back to um, this, this demo account that I've created, um, Ice Road Truckers, if I go into their delivery runs, now when you first get a Card and Cloud account, it just comes with a bunch of, of runs created by default, um, which we've just constructed. So we've constructed a few runs such as City, East, um, there's one called Gold Coast, North, Northeast, South, Southwest, and West. Basically, if you have just created an account and you don't want these, these runs, that's fine. You can go into them and you can just merge them back together and get rid of them all. Um, but they're typically good ones to start with because they allow you to start to, um, to break up where you deliver into different areas. And you can also add new runs. So if I wanted to add a new run called, um, oh, let's say it's called South, oh, I might call it... Um, outer metro west I can just jump into the the ad delivery run and click I want it to operate five days a week Monday through to Friday 
down under the advanced options, um, there's a few things down here around whether or not it's, it's an on-forwarder run, what the status should be when you do the delivery, um, if you want to hard code the way in which jobs on this run are rated. I'm just going to ignore all of that for now and just create it out of Metro West with the days and click save. Um, and it's now taken me into that run to have a look at. I don't have any jobs on this run, so it's completely empty at this stage. I'm just going to go back to that delivery run. So clicking up here on this little link, delivery runs is exactly the same as clicking up here and clicking on delivery runs. And I, I may have jumped into that screen a bit too fast, so I'll just explain. I click this button up here, um, add delivery run, to get to that screen to add them in. If you need, like when you're first setting up your account, you might have a whole lot of runs that you just want to import, and, and that's really straightforward. You can use the, the import tools. So what we recommend doing is first export from Card and Cloud. It produces an Excel sheet. You can then modify it or, or put your own, add, add your own runs into that and then just import the same file back in and that will create all of those runs for you. So that's what a delivery run is. It's a, it's a way in which you can sort your jobs into different areas that you're going to go and deliver to. The next thing I wanna talk about is, it's similar to delivery runs, but it's regarding pricing. So delivery runs themselves, they don't actually determine the price or by default, they don't determine the price of a job. Normally, if you're doing deliveries, say around the Sydney Metro, you would probably have standard rates for all of the Metro area. Um, that your rates may differ between different clients, but in general, you'd charge somebody the same amount of money to do a delivery to Northeast as you would to say do Southeast, for example. So what we have as well as the, the delivery runs is a, is a thing called rate zones. So I'm gonna go across to rate zones, uh, again in our knowledge base, where we've got all these different articles and some examples. Now here what I've done is, I've actually shown a couple of rate zones within Sydney. So basically what I've said is that everything which is sort of in the, I, I guess the real metro area, whenever I go and do a delivery to this place, to, to any of these places inside this red box, I wanna charge it at a rate which I call my metro rate. If I do a delivery to somewhere inside of this blue box, then I want to charge it out at a, a Sydney outer rate. So this is effectively what a, a rate zone is. In this case, you've got two rate zones. One is Sydney Metro and the other is uh, Sydney outer. In Card and Cloud, the rate zones, they, they work very similarly to the delivery runs. To get to rate zones, we don't have a straight link from here simply because you don't normally access your rate zone configuration that often. Um, so what you need to do is up in this search for anything box, if you come up here and type in rate zones, this links you through to the rate zones page and then you can just click on that link and it brings you straight into the rate zones that you've currently got available in the system. If you ever can't remember what some of these page names are and, and you're just looking for a list of everything, always remember that up here under more, you can click on sitemap and then this brings up a list of all the different pages in the whole system. So I believe that somewhere down here under transport uh, settings, there's a link here to the rate zones page as well. And, and that link takes me to exactly the same screen um, that I got to by using this search box up the top. So I've currently got a few different rate zones. I've got Metro, um, I've got no charges, which you would use in very certain circumstances if you do some kind of work that you never charge for and you just wanna, you wanna force a no charges rate on particular jobs um, and, and one called regional. What I'm gonna do now is add another rate zone for my um, outer and I'm actually going to rename this Metro one to be um, Sydney-Metro. So up here, I'm gonna click add rate zone to add my outer one. I'm gonna call it Sid outer. Now this option here is really um, is, is pretty cool. If you create a new rate zone, say that you have a client who needs an existing rate zone split up into two. Um, let's say that for, for one of your customers, Metro doesn't work. You actually need to break Metro into two different areas. When you create a new Metro zone, if you tell the system to clone existing customer rate charges, then Everywhere that somebody is currently priced Metro, the same rates will be copied into this new zone that you're creating. So it means that you don't have to go through the whole system and configure your new zone for everybody. You can just go in and change the rates for the one customer who's gonna use that new zone. 
In this case though, I'm just gonna say don't clone anything. Um, I just wanna create a new zone called Sydney Outer. So I'm gonna save that. That's created my rate zone. I'm also going to edit this one, which is called Metro, and I'm just gonna call it Sydney Metro. So I click the edit button over here on the right hand side, jump in there, SYD-Metro, and save. Cool. So if I go back to rate zones, um, I've now got my, my few different zones, Sydney Metro, Sydney Outer, and also the ones that I, that I already had in the system. What's really important now is that I've got, I've got the names of my runs I want to use. I've also got my different charging areas that I want to use. Those are my rate zones. But I now need to actually link them together to different suburbs and postcodes. And for that, what we use is a thing called delivery zones. So delivery zones are a link between suburbs, postcodes, delivery runs, and rate zones. So I'm just to get to the delivery zones, I did the same thing as rate zones, clicked up here, search for anything, delivery zones. Again, I could find this under the sitemap link if I wanted to, but I know the name of this, so I'm just gonna jump straight in. Now in here, we've preloaded the system with um, every single postcode and suburb across all of Australia. So you've got like, there's about 16,000 different delivery zones. But in most cases, you know, if you're doing say metro deliveries around Sydney, you're only gonna care about maybe two or three hundred of the actual suburbs and postcodes that are in this database. So don't, don't feel overwhelmed or like you have to fill them all out. If, if you ever do deliveries to places that aren't listed in here, or sorry, are listed in here that you haven't set up, by default it's set up to just take jobs and put them on the, on the default delivery run and, and it will fail when it tries to price them. So I'm just going to jump through to a delivery zone like... Um, I'm going to go to Moorbank. So that's where we used to be based with Roving. Um, there's actually two different postcodes for Moorbank because at some stage, I think Auspost switched their postcodes over. They went from like a, an old system to a new system. I know that the new one is 2170, so I'm going to go in there. Now in here, at the moment, I've got my Moorbank postcode and suburb um, linked up to go to my run called default. I also don't currently have anything set up in order in terms of how to price jobs that go to this particular area. So if someone creates a consignment right now, which is going to Moorbank, it will use this rule to allocate it to the default run. However, when it tries to price the job, it won't know how to price it and it will tell me that there's a problem that I need to fix up. So for this, for this area, I'm actually gonna change it. I'm gonna click edit down here. And what I wanna do is have it that whenever a job comes to, um, to Moorbank, I want it to go on to the West run. So I'm gonna click into my delivery runs and I'm gonna choose West. I also want it to price out at a Sydney Metro rate. Now we have two different links here. We've got one for how do we charge the customer and that's what we, called, that's what we call an income rate zone. And in addition, we've also got an expense rate zone, which is how we want to pay, say a driver or a contractor to do the work. Now, in, in some cases, you may have these two things not the same as each other. You might have it that you, you pay your, your contract driver some sort of outer rate, but you charge your customer just a metro rate. And so Card and Cloud actually allows you to do that. But in this case, I'm just gonna say that I charge my customer a metro rate and I pay my contractor a metro rate as well. So I've done this, hooked it up, I'm gonna click save. And that's now modified that delivery zone. So that now if a new job comes in and it's addressed to an address in Moorbank with this postcode, it will automatically allocate it to the West run and it will automatically price it using the uh, Sydney Metro rate zone. Cool, so I can now go through and do this to other areas. Let's say that I wanted exactly the same rules to apply to um, Liverpool in, in New South Wales. And I can jump into the Liverpool um, post, uh, suburb click edit, do the same thing. I want this to go onto the West run. I want this to go onto the Sydney Metro rating and then click save. Now, if you're looking at this um, at the moment, you're probably gonna go, well, okay, this is gonna take absolutely ages for me to do. So what we have here is, a, is a, again, an export and import tool. If you export this whole 
this whole sheet um, to Excel, it downloads a file. So what I'm going to do now is just open this up in Excel and, and quickly show you how you can use the export and import. Just one second, let me, I'm going to switch my screen share across to uh, Excel. So this is a pretty big sheet. It's got, you know, all 16,000 rows, which is um, a lot. But what, what I can do straight away is actually just click on here and apply a filter. So if I add a filter to this top row, then I can straight away jump through to just the New South Wales uh, suburbs. And I may just want, I'm going to, I'm basically just going to ignore anything which is under 2000 because I know that that's where the new set of postcodes in Sydney actually starts. So looking at this, looking around, um, you know, postcode 2000, I can come in here and straight away say, okay, I want this to be on the city run. In actual fact, I want all of these to be on the, the city run. Um, I want the rate zone to be Sid Metro uh, for income. I also want the expense rate zone to be Sid Metro. So I can now just come through and start copying and pasting stuff in here. I might then say, well, actually, pretty much every single area up to, I don't know, postcode 2100, I want them all to be priced out at a metro area, but then I'm gonna go through and actually specify which runs I want these to go on. So I might say all of these are east, um, these ones here are north, east. Um, if, I had a, if I had another east one, just put it in. Do all of this, and then it's as simple as just saving this file coming back to card and cloud and then clicking import CSV um, and loading the file back in. So I'll just screen share. Um, whoop, sorry, just a second. Just need to reshare the Google Chrome. Uh, got that here. So once I've saved that whole file and it's all good to go, I can just come back in here, click import CSV load the file that I just saved into here and then click upload. And that will apply all of those rules throughout the system. Okay, so that's the, that, that's constructing now a link between suburbs, postcodes, delivery runs, and what we call rate zones, which is how the job gets priced. What I'm gonna do now is actually go across and create a consignment which is addressed to more bank. Um, and I'm gonna show you how these rules get applied and then we'll go through and actually allocate that job to a driver so that you can see how the delivery runs and the rate zones and the driver allocation all work together um, to, to, produce, to produce a run sheet and to, to get all the work out of your warehouse. So to create a consignment, I can click on transport and then go into the consignment screen. Just like every other screen, we have an add button up the top left, so I'm gonna click add. The first thing I need to do is choose which of my customers I'm doing this work for. So in this demo account, Ice Road Truckers, I've only got one customer. They are salmon distributors. We have a few different types of consignments. Now, the most commonly used types are delivery, pickup, um, and point to point. Now, a delivery job is really like a job that you're cross-docking. So it's like a cross-dock delivery where you're typically picking up in bulk, bringing everything back, splitting it, and then delivering it out. It's also a job that's come out of your warehouse. So if you're using the warehousing side of Card and Cloud and you pick and pack a sales order, when that sales order constructs a consignment for you to do the delivery, it constructs it with the type of delivery because it's just a delivery job. You're taking it from your warehouse and taking it out and delivering it. Pickups are used if you need to go out and pick up something from somewhere and bring it back. Um, a return is very similar. However, you can set up special rules to tell the system not to charge return jobs by default. So a return and a pickup work pretty much the same way. Um, the last one I'm gonna go into is a point to point job. And a point to point job is like a job that doesn't go through your warehouse. So it's, it's really a job where like a taxi type operation where you have a driver go out, he picks up from one point and then immediately drives to the delivery point and delivers it off. Point-to-point -point jobs have a little bit of a different workflow when you're using them on the app. Um, the driver has to mark down that he's collected the consignment and then also that he's delivered it. With normal deliveries and pickup jobs, you know, typically with say a whole lot of stock which gets loaded onto a van in the morning and goes out and gets delivered, you don't want the driver sitting there marking down that he's, 
he's he's got each of these individual jobs on his van and in some cases they're already wrapped on pallets and he can't even see them so with delivery jobs the app is set up to just require a signature and a proof of delivery when the person gets to the delivery point in this case i'm just going to create a, a standard delivery job so it's one that i'm saying is either a cross dock or it's coming out of the warehouse in this case i'm just going to assume that it's a cross dock job um, Customer reference. So this is like the, the invoice number or the reference number for this particular consignment. So I'm gonna give it just a, an invoice number name like um, INV0123. Um, if you just notice there, what's quite cool is that Card and Cloud actually shows you if you've got a, a potential duplicated job. So let's say that somebody else has already keyed in my job and I'm trying to key in invoice 0999 it shows me you've already got a job in here with the same reference number. And if I want to, I can have a look at that and then I might realize, oh, okay, I shouldn't be creating this again. So that's just something we've done to try and prevent, you know, ending up with duplication um, occurring when you're, when you're keying in stuff. Okay. So this job here, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be picking up the whole manifest from, uh, from salmon distributors. So what I'm going to do is actually, I don't have their address in here currently, so I'm going to just add a new address, add a new pickup address. I'm going to put in that their company name is Salmon Distributors. Uh, you can see in here that it uses Google to try and assist us finding places that it, that it can. Um, Salmon Distributors is a, is a made up company, which is why it's not really showing anything down here, um, which is inside of Australia. So I'm just going to create the menu. I'm going to say that they are um, oh, 5 George Street in Seven Hills. Um, if I have their telephone number, I can key that in as well. Add that address in. So I've got salmon distributors where I'm picking up from. And I'm going to be delivering this to, I'm going to say that it's going to um, IGA Moorbank, which, no, I think there's a Coles in Moorbank. So Coles Moorbank. Again, it's not showing up. Um, I'm just going to quickly search for what that store name is. And maybe it's Woolworths Moorbank. Let me have a look. Oh, here we go. Cool. So that's actually found it using Google, which helps me a lot because it pre-fills all of the information for me. So I don't have to bother keying everything in or looking it up on Google as I was about to do. Let's put in the address, the suburb, the postcode, add that address. And I've, I've specifically chosen this Woolworths Moor Bank address, obviously, because it's in that suburb and postcode that I just configured to go onto that um, West run. So add address. Okay, now down here, by default, the system comes with cartons, pallets, and spaces. These are configurable, so if you need other things added, such as um, kilograms or, um, oh, I don't know, kegs or um, things like that, then just let your onboarder know and we can add those other fields in. I'm just gonna say that this particular job is for two cartons. Invoice value, this is in here for when you do, um, like you charge your customer a percentage of the invoice value for the delivery fee. So we used to do this with a couple of clients in Sydney where we would charge them, I think it was, let's say it's 5% of whatever the invoice value was when we did the delivery. It's not really common, but if you do charge like that, then you need to put in an invoice value. So um, I'm just going to leave that blank because I'm going to say that I, I don't charge this client that way. I charge them based on a carton rate. Now down here, because I'm constructing the first, the first job for the day, um, by default, Card and Cloud's figured that out and it said that I probably want to create a new manifest that this job will go on to. And then every subsequent job that I create will get added to that same manifest throughout that day. I, I do have the ability to, to choose not to do that. I can say I don't want a manifest or I want to add it to an existing manifest that's already in the system. But by default, it figures out do you have other jobs today? And if so, it, it, um, it will automatically select add to an existing manifest and choose today's manifest. Or if not, it will tell you to create a new manifest. So that is what I want to do. I want to add a new manifest and then I want to add quite a few jobs to that manifest. Under advanced options, you've got a whole bunch of things down here. So if I wanted to manually set the delivery run, I could choose one. I just want it to be automatically determined. If I wanted to specify a delivery date that wasn't just as soon as possible. I can do that as well. This product type is really important. If you do say chilled and frozen work, you would generally want to specify what the temperature of the stock is. Um, 
So I'm going to say for this particular job, it's a chilled job. And then you've got some other options around pricing. Again, I'm going to leave all of this automatically determined. And for special instructions, I'm just going to say, um, I don't know, please call client prior to delivery. One thing that's neat is that let's say that you are doing a, a delivery to a store and you always want the same instructions to appear. Um, this is really common if you're doing what people call a key drop delivery, which is where the driver basically has a key or he needs to collect a key from somewhere prior because he's delivering at a time when nobody's actually at the premises. If I put that in here and then click save special instructions for next time this is used, then next time I select a delivery to that address, it will automatically load the special instructions into that job. Um, so just, it's just a time saving feature. Okay, so once I've done that, I've got two different options. Save, if I click save, it's gonna take me straight back to the screen where I can actually see, this, see the consignment I've created. If I was sitting here and, and keying in a whole bunch of consignments, what I would do is click save and add another because that creates the job, but it immediately brings me back to the screen where I can add the next consignment so I don't have to navigate around the system and get back to the add screen. For this one, just because I wanna show you how it's allocated, I'm gonna click save. So I click on save. Um, it constructs the consignment and I can see down here it's allocated it straight onto that West run for me. So it's used the rule that we set up before based on more bank and 2170 and it's put it onto the delivery run of West. If I hadn't done any of that configuration earlier, what would have happened is it would have actually put it on the delivery run default um, because that's how all of the card and cloud accounts come out. They come with every single suburban postcode just set to go to the default run. Cool. Um, I'm just going to jump into this briefly. We're not going to go into real heavy detail around rating today because there's other, we've got another podcast, sorry, another webinar coming up which discusses the, the, the pricing in detail. But one thing to note is that it has selected the correct um, rate zone. So based on that same rule, more bank and 2170, it's used the delivery zone to figure out that this particular job should be priced at a Sydney Metro rate for both income and expense. Cool, so going back to my job, what I'm gonna do is just add, I'm gonna add another job for the same run, and then what we're, we're gonna do is run through and actually allocate that job to a driver. So I'm gonna click add. For salmon distributors, I'm gonna say this is invoice uh, 0124, so it's the next job in the sequence. Um, I'm gonna be picking it up from Salmon Distributors. And you can see now, because I've created this address, it's a lot faster to search. I can just type in the address and it comes up. This job is going to be, again, it's going to be delivered to, um, uh, I might say Coles Liverpool. Cool, so it's put in the address and the postcode, add that address. Um, this one here is one pallet, oh sorry, two pallets over one space. Um, I don't have an invoice value. You can see down here it's automatically selected, you know, should I add it to the same manifest, which it's done for me. If I want to add in another job after this, which I'll do, I'll just click save and add another. And then my last job, I'm just going to put it in as invoice 0125. Um, I'm going to say that it's getting picked up again from Salmon Distributors. But this time I'm going to say that it's going somewhere where I haven't set up a, a delivery zone so that you can see what happens to those jobs. So I'm going to add a new delivery address. Um, I'm going to say that it's going to somewhere in Manly. So I might say uh, Coles Manly. Um, there we go. No, probably not the car park, maybe just the actual store. It'll probably be better. Um, it's selected Manly, the postcode, etc. Add that address. And this one here I'm going to say is 15 cartons. And save. Cool, so those jobs have been created. Um, I'm now looking at the, the, third, the third job that I created with that second one, because I clicked save and add another, it just took me straight back into the screen to add my next job. So you can see if you do have to manually key jobs in, it's, it's, actually, not, it, it's actually still pretty fast, um, but we really recommend doing things like importing jobs using our parsers. And that's something that you can discuss with your onboarder if you're going through onboarding or if you're already set up and you want to start importing stuff, then just contact our support and we can get all that configured for you. Now from the, the dashboard, if I come into here, um, I can see straight away that this is telling me I've got some unallocated delivery runs. So what this means is that I've got jobs sitting on delivery runs which haven't been allocated to a driver yet. 
I'm just going to click on this little number one and it takes me through um, to the list of, of areas that require driver allocation. Now I've got, I'm just trying to check why I don't see West in here. I think it must be because the, the jobs on West, what's happening in here? Oh, okay. All right. One thing that's happened here is that um, when those jobs were created and they constructed a manifest, that manifest itself actually has a status in the system. So if I, I've just gone into transport manifests, come in here. If I go to all, then I can see all of the different manifests that have been created within Cart and Cloud. Now, when I ran a webinar two days ago about the warehousing system, we actually packed out a sales order and that constructed a, um, a transport job for us. That went on to a manifest which was called auto generated the 11th of July, 2018. So that one job is sitting in here. The new manifest, which has the three jobs that I just added, is sitting in here under a different manifest to the, to the auto generated one. However, it's, it's still under a status of just booked for pickup. Now, the workflow in Card and Cloud is such that you can only allocate jobs which you've marked down as having come into the warehouse. Because let's say that a client of ours has booked for us to go out and pick up a whole bunch of stock, but we actually haven't done that or we don't plan to do that yet. It can become really confusing if all those jobs show up as jobs that need to be allocated for the next day's work. So the workflow in Card and Cloud, when you're dealing with um, cross stock type jobs, which this is, is that you actually need to update the status of the manifest to be received at your warehouse before you can allocate these jobs. So I've got that this manifest is just booked pickup. Let's say that my truck goes out, picks everything up and brings it back. What I need to do then is go into the manifest and update it to in warehouse. So if I come in here and click this button, update to in warehouse, it actually updates the manifest and it updates the status of all of the associated consignments. So if I click on this consignments tab, I can see that they are all now updated to in warehouse. Previously, um, I, I didn't show you, but they, they would have said awaiting pickup because they were waiting to be brought back to the, to the warehouse. With that now done, these jobs are actually going to show up ready for allocation to a driver who's going out. We have that workflow in there again, just to prevent people trying to allocate stock that's not even going out because it becomes really confusing when you're a driver and you have a run sheet or you have jobs allocated to your mobile device that you actually can't find because they're not on the warehouse yet. So that's just a, a process procedure that we've put in um, to make it much, much more simple as to what you're allocating to go out again. If I now go back into the, to the delivery runs area and I click on requires driver allocation, I've now got both West and my default run showing up. So the reason why there's two jobs on each of these is because I, I added two jobs which I'd set up to go on West. That was the one that goes to Moorbank and the one that went to Liverpool. Under default, I have the job that I created the other day from the warehousing system and also the job that I have going to Manly. When you're first getting set up, how we recommend allocating jobs to drivers is to actually use this screen. So let's say that you've got a total of, I don't know, you might have 15 different runs. When you click on this required driver allocation, you'll have 15 different runs showing here. And these totals, such as number of undelivered consignments, undelivered, uh, undelivered cartons, will be showing you everything that you need to allocate for that particular run. So let's say that I want to construct a run sheet for, for West. I, I want to give these to a driver to go out and deliver. What I can do is click on this run. So I click on the West run. It brings me up into seeing all of the different jobs going out on this run and which day they're due to go out. So what I can see here is that for this date, which is, uh, I believe that's it's today, I've got two jobs, one going to Moorbank, and one going to Liverpool, both of which need, have not been allocated to a driver yet. So to allocate these to a driver, it's really simple. You click this allocate button, this blue one here. So I click that. It brings me into the allocation screen. Now this screen has a couple of different purposes. The first thing is that if I decide I don't want to allocate a particular job anymore, let's say that I only wanted to allocate the Moorbank job and not the Liverpool job, I can actually untick it from here and then that will prevent it from being allocated. 
when it's ticked, it's going to be allocated. And by default, it ticks everything when this page loads. Down here, there's actually some tabs across this section. Um, we've got one for allocating to a run sheet. We've got one which allows us to just change the delivery run of the consignments without allocating. And we've got another one which allows us to change the date at which these jobs are going to be delivered. What I want to do is allocate it to a run sheet for a driver. If I have an existing run sheet, they will show in, on this, in this box over on the right hand side. So if I've already allocated a whole bunch of stuff and I'm wanting to add more to an existing run sheet, I can do that from the right. What I want to do is construct a new run sheet for one of my drivers. So I'm going to do that on the left. Now I've created some, some pretty cool, I've got a pretty um, elite set of drivers here, Harry Kane, <laughs> Neymar. I'm going to go ahead and allocate this to, to Harry Kane. I think, you know, he's doing a pretty good job these days. Um, you can give your run sheets a name. So if I want to give it a name like um, West Run PM, I can put that in here. This is entirely optional. Some people, because they do both, you know, morning runs and afternoon runs, they sometimes want to use names so that they can differentiate them from one another because they all have them on the West run, but they need to be able to see, oh, was this the PM or the AM stock that went out? So you can give them names. I'm just going to leave that blank because as far as I'm concerned, all of, my, all of my West stock is being delivered at one time. By default, it puts in the day that it's due for going out. I can change that if I need to, but I'm going to leave it as the 13th and I've already selected my driver. So I can now go ahead and click allocate. What this does internally is that it actually constructs what we know as a run sheet. Now some businesses call that a manifest and that's really important that you don't get those two concepts confused. In Card and Cloud, a manifest is stock coming into you and a run sheet is for stock that you've allocated to drivers to go out and be delivered. So this has created run sheet one. So if I click on run sheet one, I can see the details about the particular run sheet. I can see information like what consignments I have on that run sheet. I can see where the jobs are on the map. So I can see that I've got this job going to Salmon Distributors. I can see that I've also got this other job going to Coles Liverpool. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually reorder these jobs and save it so that when it shows up on the driver's phone, it shows up in that order. Um, obviously with two jobs, it, it, it's not super useful, but when you have say 30 to 40 jobs and you want to manually reorder them for the driver, you, you can do that. Um, and that's what I've just done here. You then just click save consignment order and it saves it in the order that you've, you've done. Now with this run sheet, this is a grouping of jobs for this driver for this run. So if I also had Harry Kane going out and doing a whole bunch of deliveries on another run, I would typically create a second run sheet for that other run. You can do things from here like export a copy of the run sheet to give to the driver so that he's got both a paper copy and also on his phone. By allocating to this driver, these jobs will now be visible on his mobile phone to go out and get the signature. So as far as getting them onto his mobile device, I actually don't have to do anything more. I've done everything that's needed um, for them to show up on there and for him to go out and starting to do deliveries. And there's a few other little options on here as well, like you can bulk update consignment statuses and, and download things like um, con notes from all of the associated consignments and that kind of thing if you want. If you want to look at all of your run sheets in the system, it's, it's really easy. You go to transport and then click on run sheets. And then from in here, if I just click on all, it shows me all the run sheets that I've got within the system. So, so far I've only got one. It's for Harry Kane. It's on the West run and it's for today. I'm going to go ahead now and actually allocate the other run as well. So if I go back to transport, delivery runs, I've gone to my requires driver allocation and I can see that um, I've got two jobs left to allocate on my default run. The first thing that you should be doing when you have jobs showing up on runs that is default, if these are areas that you, you normally want to have go into a standard run, for example, um, Manly, I may want to put onto my, my, north, my north run, you actually need to go into your delivery zones like we did earlier and set up that link. And this is something we recommend. Whenever you notice that one of these consignments is not allocating to the correct run, go into the delivery zones then and fix the problem. 
if I just say click on this and then click move and move it to another run, it will move this particular consignment, but it won't set up the rules to help me in future. So it's good practice that when you have jobs first appear in default, that you actually wanna go in and fix up the rules behind the scenes to mean that that doesn't happen again. So with Manly, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna jump up into here, I'm gonna search for delivery zones, jump into delivery zones, search for Manly. Um, I believe it was 2095, so I'll click on Manly, bring it up. I can edit it as we did before. Um, state, New South Wales, delivery run is, I'm gonna say it's north. I wanna charge it out at Metro um, and save. Cool, so I've set up that rule. Now, the rules only apply to new jobs going forward. So if I was to now go and create a new consignment going to Manly, then it would automatically put it on the north run. It doesn't, however, go back through the system and update old jobs. So we get this question a few times. People say, I've set up, I've set up my, my zones. Manly's now linked to, um, to the north run. Why is it that under my delivery runs, my consignment that was already in there is still on default run? And that's because... The rules apply going forward to new jobs created rather than going through all, all old stuff and updating them. So if I wanna shift this job, I click on to the, this little checkbox on the left and then I click move. And move, it brings me into the same screen. Um, I can move it by, I can allocate it to a driver, but what I wanna do is I just want to change the delivery run that it's going on. So I want to move this over to north and then click move. And that's now updated it and shifted it over to the north run. Uh, if I go back to my delivery runs now, requires driver allocation, I've got stuff on both north and default which needs to be allocated. Now I'm just gonna allocate north as well. I'm gonna allocate that to um, same guy, Harry Kane, pretty solid. Get that out. If I wanted to merge it with an existing run sheet, over on the right hand side here, like let's say that I just wanted to chuck the same job on the west run, um, and put it on the same run sheet as the others, I can just click on it and then click save and that would combine it with that existing run. I don't wanna do that because I don't, it's not a west job, I wanna leave it on north. So I do my stuff over here on the left, click allocate. And that has now constructed a second run sheet for the same driver um, with just that one consignment on it. So if I go to transport um, run sheets, have a look at all of them, I've got two, two different run sheets now. And that doesn't matter. Um, I mean, that works perfectly fine. It, it's actually really beneficial for the drivers if you keep the runs split up and you give them multiple run sheets because on the app, they have the ability to see all of their deliveries broken up into the different delivery runs. So there's like a delivery run header, which says, you know, north. And then under that is all of the individual jobs going to the north run. Then they have another divider, which says west. And then underneath that, all of the jobs to the west run. Um, we used to find this really, really handy when we were at Roving Logistics because it meant that we could super quickly find jobs in the list of jobs on a mobile phone because you've got to remember you've got quite a small screen um, and often the screen can get quite long when you've got 50 jobs. And so allowing the drivers to have those dividers in there is really important. From this run sheet screen, what, what a lot of people will do is that at the end of the day, they'll actually come in here and they'll export all of the run sheets for the drivers. Now, there's a few different options around how you wanna export. If I click run sheets individual, it will export a single run sheet file, uh, sorry, a single run sheet um, Excel sheet for each of the run sheets. If I click combined, combined per driver, then it will actually, um, it will be like a single list with all of their jobs across the different runs in it. Um, and a run sheet summary is basically like a breakdown of tomorrow we have Harry Kane doing north and we have Harry Kane doing west and we might have another driver doing east and another driver doing south. And it's just a really good report to see who's doing the different areas across the whole system without having to go in and figure it all out by looking at the individual run sheets. Okay, what I'm going to do now is actually just delete, um, delete these two run sheets. When I delete a run sheet, that unallocates those jobs and puts them back on as, as unallocated. So if I delete the run sheet here, those jobs have now gone back in to be reallocated and I'm gonna do the same with the West run. So all of my run sheets have been destroyed. Now when I go into the, the delivery runs area, 
I can see again, everything's back as requiring driver allocation, north and west and default. The reason why I did that is because I briefly wanted to show you um, the bulk allocation screen. So once you've become proficient at using the, um, the allocation system, you know, run by run, chances are you're gonna to wanna to do it at higher speed. And the way that we recommend doing that is to use this screen here called bulk allocation. Bulk allocation, the first thing that you do in the top left is that you specify which runs it is that you wanna search for. Um, so if, if you wanna narrow down and only see stuff on certain runs, you can do so. In the right, it shows, it's, it's asking me which jobs do I wanna see? Are they jobs just that are going out on a particular day? Do I only wanna see jobs which haven't been delivered yet? And do I only wanna see jobs which haven't been allocated to a driver yet? So yes, that's correct. I wanna basically allocate everything for today that hasn't already been allocated. So I click search. And then this brings up all my jobs down here. So I've got the job, the two jobs from west and the one from north. The reason why that job on the default run doesn't show up is because that actually had a different delivery run date. It had a date of I think either the 11th or the 12th because it was created a couple of days ago. And when it got created, it, it, it realized that it was supposed to go out earlier than today. And because of these rules up here, I'm only seeing jobs um, which are set up to go out today. So that's why that one's not showing. If I wanted to change that and just say, I don't know, all undelivered, I can do that, click search, and then I'll also be able to see my default job in there as well. Um, you've got these little buttons here as well, like you can configure which columns get shown in this sheet. Um, if you've got dealing with like, a large, a really large number of jobs, like several hundred, you might find it easier to go into full screen mode, which you can do by clicking this. But the key thing is that from here, when you can actually allocate and do everything all in one step. So let's just say that I wanted to allocate all three of these jobs to a single run sheet and put it on West Run. One of these jobs is already is on the default run, but that's fine. I want to click allocate. Um, I then want to say, I want to put this on I want to override the delivery run. I want to force everything to West. If I didn't click that, what would happen is it would create two run sheets for this driver, one for default and one for West. And then it would add the one job to the default run sheet and it would add two jobs to the West run sheet. But I just want to put them all on West run. So I click override everything, put them all on West, give it a name, give it a driver. Um, this time I'm going to allocate it to Modric. So I've chucked that on there and uh, click update. Straight away that goes ahead and allocates it. So I've now, got, I've now got those three jobs all allocated to him. Um, it's put everything on the West run and it's added it all to a single run sheet which has got an ID of three. It's the third run sheet which has been created in the system. I then might also want to allocate this job. Uh, so I'm just going to chuck this one on Harry and again update it. And now I've got every single thing allocated to go out. If I now say, okay, what left, what left have I got to do? I can come back in here, click search, and it shows me absolutely no results because I'm only searching for jobs which are not yet allocated. And that feeds through into the delivery run screen as well. So I'm just going to leave this page. And if I click on drivers, requires driver allocation, I can see that I've got nothing left to do. So I know that my work is done for allocations for the next day. Um, so that's that's pretty much the, the process that we're going to cover off today with the, the consignments and manifests. Um, I've got another 10 minutes now to run through questions um, that people have about this process or about anything slightly more specific. What What's your question? All right. So I might have missed this from yesterday's, but um, linking the WMS to the TMS how you can efficiently uh, sort a pick onto a run rather than picking everything in bulk. Uh, and I know you can do, um, oh, geez, I've forgotten what you call it, um, what you do, uh, like a pick in bulk, but actually sorting it to a delivery one within a warehouse uh, prior to dispatching it, if you understand what I mean. Because at the moment, when you're picking orders off the app, um, it kind of just only at the end says it's allocated to certain runs but can you pick in the warehouse according to the run that it's going on? Oh, I see what you're asking. Um, so you're saying that the, the run name itself is not shown in the mobile app prior to completing the picking. Is that correct? That's right. So if you're trying to make a, a pick for a certain run, yep. let's say you're just trying to get it out the door for a certain delivery driver, 
Um, is there a way that it actually does that? So you can rather than split it all onto pallets and then someone come along and go, oh, I need that, that and that, you've got it all there on one order? There's a couple of ways. Um, the way that I know other, other clients of ours have done this is that they've set up Card and Cloud to pre-create consignments when the sale order is imported rather than creating the consignments when the sale order is packed. When you've done that, they then go ahead and actually allocate the jobs to the driver and create the run sheets. Um, and from there, what they normally do is they actually print out the pick sheet from Card and Cloud because that gives them um, all of the associated sale order data for that run. And then, you know, in the mobile app for the sale orders, how it's got like a search box, the drivers who are the pickers are then just working through the pick sheet I'll just bring this up quickly and show you uh, on Excel. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it up onto the right part of my screen. Um, no, that's right. I can see. I can see where you're going, and that makes perfect sense. Um, I was debating about creating the consignments immediately, but I didn't realize you could actually go into the run sheet and pick from the run sheet as well. It's a pretty new thing. I think it only got added like really late last year. Um, well, relatively new, I guess. The neat thing about it though is that it shows you your different sale order IDs so that you can just search for the ID in the app and then it brings up the order and you can just jump straight into it and start picking it. And that, that does seem to be working really well for people that use it that way. If I just quickly share uh, this Excel sheet for you, this is sort of a, how the thing looks when they bring up the pick sheet from the, um, from the run sheet and it's got all the different products in here and also the different sale order IDs. Um, so then you can, you can put that sale order ID into the app and it will bring that up. Yeah, it's that's a good, great. It's a good point though. One thing I'll, I'll raise as well. It's a, it's a good, it's a good request is to be able to see which run you're picking for on, on the list of all the sales orders on the mobile app, because I believe we have that in the web app. I think it says expected delivery run is shown in here. I don't believe that that information is shown on the mobile app yet. I could be incorrect, but I think that's the case. It does tell you after you've packed it. So once the packing's complete, it will say allocated to this delivery run. Okay. But, not at the start. but that's probably because I, I might not have auto create consignments on from the uh, pick. So I'll see what happens and try this, but that's great. Thanks, Vincent. I still, yeah, I still don't think it'll show you which run. That must be something that we, we can, we'll need to add in. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Um, put oh, show expected delivery run within mobile app. Okay, that's cool. No, good question, Tom. Thanks for that one. Um, I can see there's a whole bunch of chats going on here. Would, are there any questions um, that anybody else would like to ask? If so, just do what Tom did, raise your hand on the little panel and I can promote you so that you can talk. Oh, can you hear me, Vincent? Yeah, I can. Yeah, uh, it's Darren here, how are you? I'm good, thank you, and you? Uh, yeah, good, thanks. Just, um, I was having a, um, a chat there um, and it was mentioned that we can download the mobile app from the App Store. Um, and the reference was given just as ePod when we, uh, when we searched for that, uh, that's all I can see, DDI system ePod. Oh, are you just trying to find the, are you trying to find the app in the app store? Yeah, that's right. I would oh. suggest that we do that to run the, the demo so we can have a look at it. Yeah, sure. Just search for the word cart and cloud with no spaces in it. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Just, um, <laughs> I've seen it happen. It always happens on my phone. If you type in cart and it swaps it, it auto corrects it with the word cartoon. And then you end up with this weird animation app called cartoon cloud. So just be careful that you don't get that one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no worries. Thanks. Cool, Les. No problem. Good on you. Bye. All right. Thanks very much for attending, everyone. It was really cool. And again, if you've got, got feedback or suggestions, please um, please send them through. It's always it's always good to hear your thoughts and, and, and get ideas on how we can make these better. And, and if there was things that you felt were missed or things that you felt were really good, it's good to hear feedback on that too. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.